Right, good morning, everyone. Let's give it a few more minutes for more folks to join. Good morning, Ricardo, and everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, do I, do I have any volunteer today to be a scribe? So I can help, uh, but can you can you share the can you share the link uh, in the chat uh, for the notes? Yes. Okay. All right, so we don't have that many folks today in a call, but we can get started. Uh, uh, Ronald, I think I out of your name already, but uh, let's... Um, Go around with a brief introduction. So, um, welcome everyone. I'm Ricardo. I'm co-chair for Tag Runtime, and I've been running this meeting. So, the goal is to create a cloud native uh, AI things. So, so, we're creating the cloud native uh, AI white paper, and also we're talking about landscape, and we'll talk about future things in it uh, later on. Yep. Next uh, upcoming meetings, and yeah, just. Pass it on, Adele. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, I'm Adel Zaluk. I have been an upstream contributor for a while, uh, but now I'm uh, I'm a product manager uh, with Red Hat, looking after all things Kubernetes and OpenShift. And recently, dabbling into AI. Awesome, Cassandra. I'm Cassandra. I'm taking a computer science major, so I'm a college student. And I've also taught lots of kids workshops for CNCF Kids Day, which is part of KubeCon. And right now I'm working on an AI children's book, which I'm writing. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for adding that to the white paper and the section on cloud native AI for kids. Yeah, thank you for taking the section. Yeah. Uh, Kai? Uh, hey, uh, my name is Kai Shun. I'm not, I'm currently a software engineer in the N scale. Yeah, and uh, uh I just uh, maintain the some project and the Kubray and the Ray. Yeah. Thank you awesome. guys. 
Melissa? Hi, yeah, I'm Melissa. Um, this is my first time here at this meeting. Really interested in this subject, so I'll be listening intently today. I just started reading through the white paper that you all have started, and there's some really interesting stuff. Um, I'm primarily interested in like ML ops and how all of this stuff comes together in the end for production. So hoping I can contribute there. Awesome. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Thanks. Uh, Ronald. Ron. Hey, sorry about that. No worries. Too too many buttons to go from full screen back to unmute. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Ron Petty. Uh, I'm a consultant at RxM, a uh, longtime member of the CNCF. We were part of the team that created the certifications for Kubernetes and uh, do a lot of things with, with the ecosystem in general. Um, also may have noticed uh, we're also on the, uh, myself and Tom, who's there in the, the Slack, are members of the SF chapter of the ISOC, the Internet Society. And so we have lots of uh, interest in what goes on in AI for different reasons, whether it's uh, from deploying cloud native software to safety type aspects as well. And so just, you know, continue our involvement and uh, looking forward to getting this thing out the door and moving on to the landscape. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Welcome. I'm finally Victor. Yeah, I'm Victor Liu, independent database consultant, but interested in any open source, especially AI, security, and edge computing. All right, thanks. Uh, Andre, you just join. The folks just join. Um, hey everyone, I'm Andre. I work at Apple, uh, part of the data platform team, uh, building a book solution here. So I'm coming from Q4 community, been there for the last six years. Mostly involved to helping folks complete this uh, one API um, uh, paper. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think we got everybody. Anybody I missed? Oh, Kathy. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome. All right. Uh, so I guess we can get started with the. Uh, uh, cloud data white paper discussion. Um, so I think a lot of you have already uh, seen the white paper, read through it, added different sections. Um, so wanted to get a feeling from the team members here on a target date to have a final draft to send to the CNCF, uh, we can actually go on for a long time discussing all these different topics. Uh, in at some point, we had to say like, okay, this is our we're we're gonna make a cutoff and basically make that a deliverable. And any other topics, we can actually create another white paper. We can enhance this one. So there, we can create a, a white paper on a more specific area in the future. Uh, so that's not out of the question. Uh, but yeah, wanted to get uh, your thoughts on this and on, for folks on the from folks on the call. Uh, are is is KubeCon in scope for this? Uh, I mean, if do we want to do something before KubeCon? Uh, so that we can have a preview of it and get more, even more feedback or, yeah, because I, I don't have like the full picture on the guardrails on, you know, what, what makes a deadline a deadline in that, in that case. Uh, but I think it, KubeCon is a nice milestone, I'd say, a KubeCon Europe to be exact, which happens in, uh, in March 19th. Uh, which is yeah, I guess a couple of months out. Yeah, that that sounds good to me. Uh, any other thoughts from other community members? Is KubeCon uh, sound like a like a right before KubeCon? Maybe I don't know, like three weeks before KubeCon. So then, I I think this still needs to go to the CNCF staff to to get published, and they need to review it before. Uh, 
it, it actually gets published. So it might be good to, you know, just set up the time maybe three weeks or uh, before KubeCon. Uh, but yeah, KubeCon sounds like uh, the place maybe we can actually showcase uh, the paper and, and gain more traction, gain more contributors and enhance the space. And uh, like I said before, we can also tackle different areas in the future that are more specific. I think KubeCon might be helpful uh, gathering interest in that. Um, I would say okay. Um, uh, there, there's no hard time limit on you know when we will publish the uh, white paper. Yeah, it's decided by the this you know the members here. Um, it would be great. Yeah, great if we can publish before the Kupka. Um, but I feel we need to still there's still quite some um editings or clean up that need to be done when I read through this right. Um. So I'm not sure um whether we can get it really. Uh, also like Ricardo, like you know, Ricardo said, right? We need to submit it to the CNCF staff and then they need to publish this. And then everyone is very busy before, I mean around the time frame of Kupka. So I'm not I'm not very sure we, whether we can get that done. Um but if we could, that would be great. But I just feel we need to someone or several people need to go through it and then to make it consistent and coherent. And it is, it is very, you know, I think it's, it's, it's expected, right? Because uh, different people write this, you know, white paper contributed to this. So the, there are some, we, we need someone to really, uh, you know, kind of make it consistent. Makes sense. Andre, you have a point? I'm just like wondering, maybe Ricardo, you can share what is the process for CNCF to reviewing this once they send it to to the CNCF staff. Um. So I basically, think... yeah. Go ahead, Ricardo. Okay, I think you. I think you have more knowledge about this. So. Yeah. Um. So the I think the you know, I think Ricardo can send this to CNCF staff and then ask them to publish it, and then probably you know the um TOC can take a look and review it. Um, the, the, yeah, not that, that. That's it. Um, it's, it's all. But I, I feel as this team, as you know, we this working group, I would like to, uh, you know, um, attract interest or um, um, or more contribution to this working group. It's, it's, it's important. We publish a high quality white paper. Yeah, I think that's important to start with. Currently, mm -hmm. I feel like here there's a when I when I went through it, I feel there's a some sections, there's a mix of, especially in the challenges sections, I feel there's a mix of challenges and solutions for some for some section. So some section only talk about challenges, but some section talk about both, you know, challenges and solutions. So I think we need to think about how we, you know, make that consistent. Maybe we should have another section on, you know, the you know available solutions. And also for that, I feel, um, can we um, be comprehensive or how should we, you know, word it, right? So that, you know, for the other solution, which we do not include, right? We do not, those solutions um, owners do not feel, you know, they are excluded. So we, 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 I think we need to, to think about how we should do this. Just, yeah, to be, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I just made a note of that comment from Kathy. Uh, yeah, so then, so with, yeah, so I think we got aside that maybe we want to shoot before KubeCon, and so now we can talk about the different concerns that the different community members have about the different sections in the white paper. And Kathy mentioned this comment, but yeah, any other comments are welcome. So maybe maybe just a comment before we we jump into the concrete comments. Uh, maybe do we want to like set a milestone for uh, like finishing a section or a concrete section and then like be concrete about the milestone we we set and then so like every week we go and review where we are with the milestones that we have. Uh, that would probably get us closer to to finalizing one or more section or is the current milestone now like get all the reviews out of the way and then 
uh, focus on dividing up into themes and building solutions. Because I think we could also work in pattern and as as highlighted in the slide discussion. I mean, that sounds like a good uh, suggestion to me. Uh, we need to actually create that plan. Any volunteers uh, to create that specific plan that says, so I think we have February, right, left. Uh, maybe we have three or four weeks left. Uh, so this meeting happens every two weeks. So I suppose we have another two weeks before saying that we're going to have this ready for KubeCon. Does anybody want to um, say maybe uh, or create some some sort of structure that says uh, we're going to have these sections ready by the next meeting and we're going to discuss them and, and then basically uh, afterwards we're going to have another meeting and what are the sections that we're going to have ready for, for that meeting. So just create that structure. Uh, does anybody want to do this um, on the call? Uh, Ricardo, I'd be I'd be happy to to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of related to just all of this, I'm I'm running a professional development uh, event for the ACM in February, so I'll have time because it's all related topics, right? So it, the, to me, this is perfect. Uh, you know, I could spend a fair bit of time actually in the next couple of weeks on this to um, perfect. Kind of make a plan and hunt people down when we need to <laughs> fill fill yeah. things in or correct things. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Yeah, okay. that's great. I can also help here, uh, Bruno, if you if you're looking for for someone who can we were a product manager, product manager head. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah, and, and we can collaborate also on the Slack channel and we can hunt people down there as well. Yeah. Um I'm just wondering whether there's anyone who would like to, you know, separate the you know the solutions uh, from the challenges and move the solutions to you know, uh, maybe a separate sections so that, you know, we can, they can be consistent. You know, we just talk about challenges in this section. Right. Um, uh, Kathy, this is Ron. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think, I think, um, you know, there's two, there's two threads here, right? We've got the individual sections, but then there's the whole thread of reading the entire article, right? I, I think uh, we got to look at it from both points of view. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, I'd, I'd be happy to take a stab at kind of doing an overall, making sure it makes sense and, you know, maybe refactor or move those sections and get everyone's uh, thoughts on that. Because uh, to me, it's, you know, Alex and others, I've mentioned it in, in the various chats. There's going to be different levels of readers, right? Experts and non-experts. And so they got to read the whole thing, right? Not Not just one section so the whole thing has to be in some kind of reasonable order okay great thank you so much awesome yeah we so get it from from your um what do you think should we move it to solution opportunities or we should have another section in the doc um i think probably we can have a separate section you know um say um you know current a solution or example solutions, right? Because I don't know whether we can exhaust all the solutions. So I think the wording we need, we use, uh, we, 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 yeah, we need to pick a, a good right wording so we do not. Uh, other people when they read it, right? If we miss some solutions, right? They don't feel um, they are excluded. Right, yeah, it's just a sample of, of them, that's right. Yeah, some sample solutions, something like that, yeah. And just like Ricardo mentioned at the beginning, we, you know, once we start giving up tech, you know, tactical, technical details, this paper becomes another, another thing, right? And so it should be relatively short and sweet and referencing to other, other documents or potential future documents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think we have... So these are challenges, right? So do we have, so, so do we want to, so, did I, am I hearing that we want to develop these solutions opportunities more, this this section with more examples or? So I I initially like thought like we had the reference implementation section. I'm not sure if it overlaps with solution opportunities. I was more thinking of solution opportunities is more like the solution space, which overlap more or less with the reference implementation. But then I, I think from the chat, 
uh, I, I don't remember if it was Ronald or uh, or someone else who said that we might want to have a reference implementation of sorts in in here as well, which is within the goals of the white paper. I, I just wasn't sure what we, what we concluded from that thread, but the general, you know, for me at least, I felt that we we need to represent uh, implementations as solution space or getting started to point folks to where they can look for solutions um, or existing state of the art work and so on. Yeah, but I, I think the reference implementation might not be ready before KubeCon. So that's uh, we have to. Yeah, I, I actually yeah. think to that point, we might want to just drop it um, because we don't want to pick a winner if we're not ready. Yes, I agree. Yeah, CNCF does not you know, allow this, you know, but yeah, that's against the CNCF rule. We should not pick a winner. Yeah, I think we can drop that. Um, but I, I'm thinking about, you know, because there are some uh, uh, in, in those challenge sections, there are some, you know, a, a description on, you know, solutions or links. Yeah, I, I'm thinking how we should do with those, right? Should we move it to, yeah, probably we can move to a separate section, a new section called like, you know, um, some example, um, or solutions or something like that, yeah. I guess, so from my understanding, the solution should come from the challenges, right? I mean, that, that is what we tried to, 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 I think we did it for several challenges already at the end. Um, so your suggestion, just keep it, keep the challenges just clear and address these challenges in as the solutions as a separate section, right? Yeah, yeah. In that separate section, we can say, okay, what the solution is for what what challenges, or sometimes maybe a solution is for two challenges. It could be right one solution address two challenges. So I'm thinking, ah, uh, that will be more clear. You know, we post the challenges, and then in the future, if any people, any you know, community or companies have more solutions, yeah, they can, you know, add it there. Okay, so we, we want to have a top level challenges and then within, uh, or we have, uh, okay, so we have a top level, maybe different areas and then in, in the different areas we have challenges and solutions. Is that how we want to do it? Or is that... uh, here's my thought. So we have challenges, right? And then challenges we have, you know, different, we already identified some challenge, different some challenges, right? In different sessions, um, sub sessions, right? And then we have another big session on, you know, example solutions. Yeah. In that example solutions, we can identify. Okay, we can talk about some move, move some solutions, which is currently put into the challenges section to that new section, and then we can say, oh, we can also describe, you know, what kind of challenges does that solution, you know, solve, something like that. that yeah, that's my. I'm trying to get a structure here, basically. So, so we have, we have our native AI areas or something, and then within we have challenges, and then we also have solutions. Yeah, and the, on the challenges, we we list all the challenges and description on the of the challenges. We would have that. Yeah, list of we challenges. We already have that, right? And so yeah. we, we don't have uh, solutions yet. Currently, we, we, we kind of mixed the solutions inside okay. the list of challenges. I think it's good to move out, you know, because some challenge in the list of challenges, some just talk about challenges. Some, yeah. you know, section talk about both challenges and solutions. So it's not consistent. So I think, okay. you know, we just move, move out. Okay. Uh, okay. But, so go ahead. Uh, yeah. Just one, one maybe counterpoint here. I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't strongly disagree with with doing it this way my only hesitation would be if there's you know too many challenges too many solutions and there's overlap between the solutions to various challenges while that may be reality um to the to the non super technical people um it might be a bit uh much to kind of backtrack and infer and and you know versus an alternative just a challenge and a you know potential solution then the next challenge and a potential solution to it um at least then we can you know consider maybe we should only be putting challenges where it's clear there's a, a cloud native project 
that fills some gap to help solve it, right? And then we that gives us a chance to enumerate um, what's out there in maybe a little bit more bulleted way is just a, as an alternative. But this could work too, as, as well. Yeah. I, I guess maybe, it, I think I agree with, with, with both approaches in the sense that, so first of all, we need to brainstorm all the challenges. We need to brainstorm all the solution. And I think the exercise of deciding whether, you know, to put the solution within, like, I think of it as problem space and solution space, right? Um, we, we can decide later on, uh, after we have put all the solutions out there, how we want to structure it in the doc. Um, my initial reaction to this was like, if we make the problem space clear enough, we can we have leeway on putting the solution every anywhere we want. Yeah, I agree. So maybe we so because there are some challenges, some section, some challenges. There's no solution put in there yet. So it's not like every. So that's why I think a separate um, solution section will be better. <laughs> Kathy, it's actually kind of funny. I that, That's actually what prompted me to think the other way for the challenges that had no solution, we would say there's no solution <laughs> right next to it. But uh, I'm good with what you're suggesting. Also, maybe we should answer the question, what is the purpose of this paper? Um, so what we want to show uh, to the CNCF community um, eventually. Well, we have a second like, summary, right? So that's, is that within the purpose or? I guess like my question is like, we doing, like we want to show why doing AI and ML in the cloud native, you know, world is important. Or we want to like show them, hey, like we already have this kind of like, you know, problems uh, by running AI on, on cloud, right? And we kind of like proposing this set of tools that you can use to, resolve them because I guess like uh, as you said like we're not going to propose reference architecture by now because it might take time for CNCF to establish it right which means like should this paper be only focusing on the existing problems rather than saying some of the problems addressing them um, I think it's fine to, to mention this but I just want to understand what is the purpose of our like paper yeah, I think we can I think we can reference um some of the solutions that are possible or that are currently out there, but then we we don't have to say that that we're providing this as a reference architecture, but but we can leave that out um, that we're gonna provide something in the future or something or, or or this is currently in the works or something like that, right? So that um I think you know I I understand Andre's points. Yeah, I think probably. Also, we can think about whether, yeah, we just maybe just uh, um, talk about challenges because we have another landscape, right? That will lead to all the existing, um, I mean, kind of solutions. Um, maybe we, in the solution section, instead of talking about the, the detailed solution, we can probably refer to that thing. I'm open for this, uh, just, just an idea. Yeah, just want to address, you know, Andrew's points. This... I don't know what was the sort of others, yeah. Yeah, so the... uh, I just added the uh, yeah, I just added the link. But yeah, I, I think we could use multiple um, to to just see. And so one one aspect of it is consistency: how people read white papers, CNCF white papers. What are they expecting from reading a white paper? So this could give us this or inform us from that perspective. But I also do agree with what Andre was asking, where like we need to keep the end in mind, which is why we're building or or writing the white paper in the first place. Um, and I, and, and when I, like when I initially, uh, read the white paper, I was getting the impression of like, we're doing a survey on what's out there. Like if, if, if I'm reading a survey paper, here's the problems here, the existing solutions. And then someone else is doing research in the area could look into developing a, a, a niche solution, uh, or look at a particular problem and develop solutions for it and write a particular paper about that. So I was thinking of it more of a survey paper. Um, to give folks information about what's out there and how, and I think the question that we can probably is how, what is the role of cloud native for this huge AI landscape, I guess, is, is, is something I would maybe think about uh, communicating in this white paper. But yeah, just putting out there the existing 
white paper that I think the latest one that I or the latest buzzword uh, uh, white paper that I've seen and maybe we could use some uh, some of the references there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I shared this document, so I, I mean, we can, it sounds like we need to work on the structure of the paper now. So that's the, the, yeah. the next step, right? So. Right. I like the structure we just put down, you know, say what, why cognitive AI, what is cognitive AI, and then cognitive AI, yeah, areas. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think also, I think it's it's a great, thank you for sharing this, Adele. Uh, so they also have this kind of platform paper, they have like table, right? Like example of CNCF and CDF projects, right? So maybe, you know, like we can uh, learn something from this as well, right? Um, because they didn't really mention all the projects during the paper, right? They just speak about the challenges, right? Around the platforms in a lot of different mm -hmm. environments. Okay. We can do that. So your point is we remove the solutions section. Is that your point? I mean, I, I'm I'm open to other like opinions. Just uh, I think we need to understand like what is again like the main purpose of mm -hmm. this and that makes sense. Yeah. So um, like the conversation that I have with Ron, I mean, we there's so many different areas. So we can actually target this to something like the platforms, what white paper. Uh, you can say what is cloud from what is cloud native, what does it mean? And we could have another paper or document that, that actually talks about the solutions and the challenges. So yeah, I think that will be probably better, you know. So we only talk about challenges in this paper and then you know, so get people's, you know, um interest on in solving these challenges. And then we have another paper, right? To have a larger community, and then we can talk about the, you know, the solutions that will produce a more comprehensive list of solutions and uh, I'm okay with that. So if I if I would summarize, if we were to answer what is the purpose of the AI cloud native white paper, is that the purpose is to highlight the existing challenges in the space or is the purpose of to survey existing challenges and solutions or what 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 would be a sentence that we can describe together? The, the the purpose of this paper I think uh, you're you're exactly right um I think you know for us knowing this stuff we has a particular meaning but if you come from an environment where you may be doing machine learning what uh you know can cloud native assist with uh, or what can't it ass assist with right and so, here, I mean, this is, to me, this being the first white paper, we can't get too technical per se, I would think. I think it'd be more like, here's what, you know, we say like, what is cloud native AI? Well, what was cloud native, right? Well, what is AI? I would say more people know what cloud native is than what AI is, right? And then there's a subset of people who know ML, right? Just We'll call it just more traditional, you know, stuff, spark, big data, stuff like that. So I, I think the paper should read in a way that migrates people towards these tools as a solution for AI problems. So they need to know what the AI problems are. Um, then they need to know what cloud native tools are good at, right? Like why did it, you know, why was Kubernetes made, right? Why, why is Kubeflow created, right? It's 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 not just the end new tools, right? All this stems around Kubernetes, and so. You know, there's still people that need to be convinced why Kubernetes helps here as well, much less any of the latest, greatest, newest things. And so I think if we could kind of like, it's like role playing, right? If if you have a certain set of tools and knowledge, what would you need to know versus someone else? And so I think, you know, we can't answer it for everybody, but I think taking somebody who's on the fence about cloud native, we could convince them that these things are compelling. I think that's a good, good one. And for a challenge and a solution, I think, you know, don't forget about Kubernetes itself, just as a overall distributed scheduler and, and how that may fit into this, this bigger picture. We don't have to explain how some esoteric AI tool solves one little, little problem. So not really clarifying things, but uh, I think a role-based approach would be something to consider as, as someone reads this. So oh, go ahead, Kathy. 
Yeah, I am thinking, you know, yeah, uh, 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 Ronald, you just um, uh, talk about, yeah, that's good. So that's probably we can, or well, those we can put into why cloud native, right, AI. So, yeah, what, when we talk about what, maybe we talk about what is cloud native AI first, we define that. And then we'll talk about why, why AI, cloud native should, you know, can be combined with AI, or cloud native platform can support AI workloads. Why is that? Why Kubernetes is important there? Uh, I, I, I remember, uh, you know, there's some uh, description on that or some paragraph on that. Um, that those one we can put into the why cloud native, you know, AI. Um, but in terms of whether so, the solution, I'm open to that. Um, I just think, thinking, um, yeah, go ahead. No, no, uh, sorry for interjecting. I thought you finished your sentence. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I, I'm just trying to, like, I, I wasn't alluding to us going or answering one question, but rather the purpose. So if I would summarize what I just heard, I think I, I will be wrong, but let me try, which is the purpose is to identify how the existing cloud native landscape helps us solve uh, uh, some or all uh, of the AI problems. Is this one thing we want to come out or I, I would say one of the purposes, or at least the purpose of this paper. Is that a summary of what you said, Ronald and Kathy? Yeah, I think I think so, right? There's existing ML out there and why did, why did Kubernetes help with that? And then, I mean, if you just pick like, just as an example, if you pick one thing that's making AI happen, happening now is GPUs, right? And it's on lots of people's radars, and you could just simply ask, does Kubernetes manage GPUs, right? And for a long time, it didn't, right? And just to show that there's an evolution here, right? And old tool sets became better, new problems arise, the CN tools are evolving to meet those challenges. So yeah, yeah I think what you said is exactly right. All right, yeah, that sounds good. I think, yeah, I wrote it in the notes as well, Ricardo. So I guess, I guess the question was, or like the purpose that I got was, how does existing cloud native landscape aid in solving AI or emerging AI problems? That's that's what I wrote. Feel free to correct that in the notes. But yeah. well, yeah. I would say the the it's not just you know how the existing um you know um solutions or solve you know AI uh, challenges. I think. Uh, it's, I think uh, we, we also need to concentrate more on the challenges, right? Um, what are the challenges? First, we need to know all the challenges, right? And then I think we can have some example solution to solve those challenges. Uh, that's okay. But, you know, uh, I'm not sure whether we can exhaust all the solutions here. We can provide a comprehensive list of all the solutions here. And also, so, I think the paper is yeah. we welcome new, you know, solutions. New, like, I mean, people to develop you know, new solutions to solve these challenges. And another thought on this, like most, like most of the challenges could be addressed via cloud native technologies, right? Which means, like, we can summarize why we should push AI, machine learning to you know Kubernetes um, as a standard, right? And you know why Kubernetes should be a de facto platform to do uh, machine learning at scale, right? Uh, but in that case, the, the 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 paper like basically we will say this as a, like you know as a conclusion after the challenges, because most of the challenges, if you take a look, they cannot address by if we if we just see what Kubernetes offers today, right? Not all of them, um, but like you know, um, part of this could be easily addressed. Um, yeah, so I don't like if <clears throat> if the platforms white paper actually doing the same thing, and then because it looks like they they mentioned the cloud native just at the top, right? I don't see the conclusion there. Well, it it's a different purpose, right? So we're trying yeah, yeah. we're trying to identify our the purpose for this specific white paper that we're working on, right? So I mean, not, it doesn't have to be the same, but but I agree we have to come up with like kind of like a focus purpose, right? Because because if we're all over the place that the reader is not going to get anything, right? Yeah, right. Um, Sorry, somebody. I, I think, 
Kind of point. Yeah, I, I think Kubernetes, like we all know, like Kubernetes has grown to be the de facto implementation of most of the things we discuss in cloud native. So that that is the elephant in the room. I was rather I was rather looking into the the frame of the paper and the purpose because yeah, I mean we have solutions. Kubernetes is, you know, to a great extent the solution to deploying you know uh, ml models to to also at production and so on so i guess that the you know eventually or ultimately kubernetes will be mentioned as the thing that helps us move especially from the ops perspective uh so from that regard i i, I think we're we're good um i was more like trying to brainstorm around the frame and the goals and the narrative that we're trying to walk people through when reading the paper. Okay. Um, when I look at the, you know, the, here, the, the structure here, from a summary to why, what, and then um, cloud native AI areas and component, I think this looks good to me. I don't know how this looks to others. Uh, just just as an, an example, I, I would take this paper, like who would I give this paper to, right? I think a you know, budding computer science AI student, you know, just as a read without really knowing what they're reading. If I went to a CEO with this, I would probably expect them to know what the cloud vaguely was. I would still not expect them to understand what cloud native is. So for those, you know, that audience, I would, you know, we should spec out a little more detail on what cloud native is. And then to the point of why are we even here? You know, how are we tying this back? Is it solving some solutions? I think that'll become uh, a little little more obvious. So, um, I mean, it's a white paper, right? Tech technical people will probably read it, but the reality is, is I would, I mean, Ricardo, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would argue this isn't for technical people, right? This is for um, the business managers, program managers, this is, you know, for students, this is, you know, I, I would say that's more of the target audience here. Because if I was already technical, I'm already using Kubernetes. I'm already, you know, I might look for hints here about what to do with AI, but I think uh, the other audiences might give more benefit from this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's, you get a so more like a general audience. Uh, and, and then I think we, if we want, we can also get more specific later on. But I think this is a start, right? So, sorry, go ahead. And just to address it, that also might be the paper for organization who are like in the middle of migration, right? So yes, there are like Kubernetes is very popular for, you know, for MLOps as well. Like as we can see from, you know, from OpenAI papers, so from other like folks who are using Kubernetes heavily for their ML workloads, right? But not all of the people using Kubernetes right now to serve, train and deploy their models, right? So I guess it will be helpful for them to see the power of not only Kubernetes, right? Because Kubernetes is not like the thing. It's more about the ecosystem which builds around Kubernetes because all these technologies like Istio, Knative, they're heavily used in our ecosystem. And <clears throat> it's like without these technologies, like we just cannot build the same quality of tools for machine learning that we can do with them, right? Um, so the broader ecosystem and the power of Kubernetes gives a lot of value for many people who want to do this this at scale, right? That's a, that's a great point, Andre. Like wrapping this up at the end, reminding people who put this thing together, right? The, the players in the the CNCF ecosystem. Uh, that's a that's a great point. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that's this structure kind of looks good. I, I think Ron, you you can uh, modify this as well, and and we can offline add this structure here to this paper. Uh, I mean, we can, if it's, if it's too much uh, trouble to edit this one, we can also create a, a new doc or like a second. Yeah, I th that, that's what I was just coming to mind. I think I'll take a swing just doing it in a new doc, just in case people don't like it. <laughs> right? So we have to totally go backwards. Uh, yeah. And then uh, if it's more, you know, majority rules, then then we can switch. Yeah, and then and also that we we have the notes and clarity that we discuss this here, and uh, we're searching for a structure and a purpose, right? So that's 
why we're yeah, I think it. I think getting the I guess structure and the purpose right uh, will will ease like speed us up like in a major way because like then we're just filling the gaps uh, or masking the details right so like getting getting the the frame and the purpose and the personas of like who's reading this and what they're getting out of it in this format would help inform everyone who's writing towards and contributing to the white paper itself as the content and the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. I have another question here. Um, um, what is our time? So here we have like cloud native AI. And then, so that's like, you know, using the cloud native technologies, right? Or having to solve AI challenges. And then there's also using AI for cloud native, um, which means using AI models to solve some cloud native challenges. Yeah. So, so, to, yeah. so how should we, I think it, it would be good, you know, um, I don't know your thoughts. Should we like, you know, clarify this so that people will understand why is cloud native for AI? The other is AI for cloud native. So there are two aspects. Um, yeah, I think we, we could clarify that, but sounds like we're focusing more on cl uh, cloud, cloud, cloud native, cloud native yeah. for AI right now. Mm -hmm. I, That's I also, fine. I also yeah. like the other one a lot for sure, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. using Gen AI, Gen AI to help cloud native environments and installations and monitoring and security. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can mention that in this white paper, but I, I don't know if we want to focus on the two topics because it might confuse the audience. Yeah. And leave that out for another another document. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We can probably in this one, we can say this paper will concentrate on cloud native AI. We can have another one which concentrate on AI for cloud native. I think that's worth a separate paper because there are a lot of, you know. Yeah, uh, because there's, there's uh, other aspects like for example, using Gen AI to help uh, red teams, security red teams, security blue teams, or uh, you know, orchestrating your whole set of workloads using Gen AI or monitoring the health of your systems using things like uh, Cage GPT, right, to to check for issues in your Kubernetes cluster. So that's that's the other side of uh, AI. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So then, then we're good. Good. So here, this paper will concentrate on on cloud and native AI. Okay, that's fine. Does that sound good? But, but I do. Good yeah, I do think it's it it makes sense to highlight, you know, that that we like, you know, as as Casey came up with the question, someone is reading is going to come up with the same question and say, what about AI for cloud native? So I think a small excerpt in the in the white paper especially in this section, or maybe calling the section, uh, you know, cloud native for AI or AI for cloud native and making it clear that we're focusing on like acknowledging what is AI for cloud native, but saying, as, as you just mentioned, uh, uh, Ricardo, that the focus of this paper just at the top is to focus on how like cloud native for AI, basically. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, we can, we can, we should mention that. Uh, this paper will focus on cloud native AI. And then we also define what is cloud native AI and also what is AI for cloud native. And then we say we, we are going to have another paper. I mean, on that AI for cloud native. Yeah. Or something like that. I just have a question for you, Katie. Like from your point of view, should the working group AI address this kind of um, things uh, using, you know, generative AI to improve Cloud native technologies. Yeah, that's a good question. Can, can someone give an example of that actually happening? Yeah, I think it's we're talking about KTS GBT, like for example, like when you use um, you know some models to um, uh, help you with uh, monitoring and observability tools, right? So all of these things are very early. Yeah. Because like, you know yeah. it's very hard to build such models, right? Uh, yeah, maybe that like exactly what you just said. It's a little definitely early. That to me sounds more like a. If you mention it early, it's gonna like derail people's thinking. I think something like that should be at the end, maybe where it's like you know future slash next steps slash how we're evolving, right? Like, you know. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Because, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, 
yeah because i guess like even all these like lms models uh, they're not like they're smart to be able to you know like deploy some cloud native tools today right they can help you to do some observation but you know like creating um yet another service mesh i'm not sure we are there yet right so it might take yeah. like you know a couple yeah. of years right yeah, we're not there yet but the, also part of the work in the CSCF is also to forecast what's going to happen in the next two or three years based on the technology that is being used. Um, so yes, I think it's worth mentioning and and just staying at the forefront of that, right? So I think it's, for that reason, I think it's, it's, it's useful maybe to have another paper or, or to at least mention it. But, but this is something that nobody knows, right? And and then nobody knows nobody knows how it's going to be used in the future, but but it sounds like it, it's going to, uh, you know, generative AI is, sounds like it's going to be everywhere. So I, it, I, there's no reason to think that it's not going to be in, in cloud native. Um, Ricardo, not the pivot. I know we only got a few minutes, but just a quick question uh, to link into other papers. Do you, do you think there's any chance uh, AI landscape being done for KubeCon? Uh, maybe we can talk about the next item. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it depends on how much progress we make on these sections. And then just a matter uh, of um, each one of the community members uh, committing to the, these uh, changes to the, the GitHub repository, uh, Cloud Native uh, Landscape V2 repository. and. With all the different tiles and the, and the, and the different right. projects and information from I, each of these projects. And, yeah. yeah, I would just challenge the group. And I mean, I'll do what I can to help, of course, but like just challenge everybody. Like, if it'd be a real slam dunk for the working group if if both of these things could be achieved by Cube KubeCon, just to to get the get the eyeballs on things, right? The to show that the the CNCF is is organized around it. Um, at least that's 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 my my take on it. And of course, this paper is is in reference to that those, you know, that software, right? So having having that at the ready, I think, is to me a great goal. Yeah. So um, I'll I, with, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll follow up in the Slack channel with 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 this document, uh, but. We have like a few minutes left, so I wanted to see if from anybody uh, on the call has any comments about this or, or any other section that they want to add or some section that is missing or if it looks yeah. good as it is right now. Uh, there was, there was, was, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just wanted to say that I, I was quite, so uh, again, go, coming back to the same question that we were asking, uh, are we... Because of the the AI landscape itself is massive. Like there is LLM observability, LLM models, LLM uh, rags, whatever. There's a lot of tooling in the AI landscape, and I think here we're mixing both things. We're mixing uh, tooling in the cloud native landscape. So basically, mixing cloud native for AI and AI for cloud native all at once. Uh, and I'm not sure if you wanna iron out the purpose for that landscape at the same way we did with the white paper, or are we doing it the other way, which is brainstorming, putting everything we know in one place and then honing down into the purpose. Just want to make sure that we're cognizant of, of, of that. Yeah, I think it's, to me, it's just more about making a relationship between this uh, high level uh, bullet points and cloud native, right? So we know like um, are sort of AI related, but how do, how do these actually re relate to um, Cloud native. Well, how do they relate to both areas, right? So, uh, uh, that's why I said maybe we, we should have a, a blurb on each one of these things and how those two relate to each other. Uh, so I I can think of uh, relationships between both in each one of these items, but um, you know I'm open also to say uh, somebody you know saying like, no, this is just data science, or this is just AI and it shouldn't be related to cloud native.
agree. I mean, th- this dock is to to lead the horse to water, right? The, we want people to to pick the the tools in this ecosystem, right? We're not here to, I would say, to judge AI tooling and as a whole. Um, you know, we're here to expose people, I would say, to to what the CN CF has in in the, with its abilities to help enable AI. So at one level, it is just a bunch of tools, right? The landscape is just a bunch of tools. Uh, when do you use them, right? And then that goes back to, and if we're saying cloud native is, is the way, right? Well, what is the way, right? That, that comes with certain, certain design aspects. Um, and then when it comes to AI, there's its own techniques and design aspects. And we're trying to combine those things in a useful way. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I guess the reason I'm asking is to get to where what you just said, Ronald, which is we need to have a filtering mechanism, and that filtering mechanism is is what how all of this plethora of tools that we have in the pixelated cloud native landscape serve to address AI in source. So that would be a filter versus like you know if you look at data science, I think I think I think reading this was out discussing it, it it felt that we're adding all the tooling we know about for data science, all the tooling we know about for AI, but we're not drawing the relationships of how or adding the filter that I just mentioned. That, that That's right. right. I mean, to that exact point is how we started the refocus on the landscape anyway, because I went to the current landscape and tried to search for like machine learning, not, you know, forget AI, even the old school terms weren't filterable. Right. And so um, that's something that's on people's radars. We just got to we got to just think about it and, and try because it, it some of these th- categorizations of filters um, are new. Right. Uh, even in the traditional landscape, if you consider just, you know, uh, big data. So uh, totally agree with you. I think we I think it's just we just got to focus on it and, and try and see what people think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then. I can make relationships here with uh, cloud native, but we have maybe they need to be displayed in some way on the landscape. Uh, for example, ve- vector databases ca- uh, can be run on top of Kubernetes, right? So, uh, you know, you monitor your machine learning models uh, that are running on top of Kubernetes. So, well, I mean, Kubernetes is the, the big enabler here. Case okay, serve is running on top of Kubernetes. Um, I don't know. Pi, uh, the the Jupyter notebooks also, when they spin them up, they run as Kubernetes pods. Prometheus is used to monitor the infrastructure where all these data science workloads are being run. That that's exactly right, Ricardo. That yeah, we have an established ecosystem that ha- helps us in many aspects. And then, like you said, Kubeflow is like a definitely a good step in the AI more specific direction and there will be ones that are even more specific to AI and maybe less to just, you know, good old fashioned big data ML. Yeah. Sounds good. So anybody, does anybody want to take on this meta data type of relationship or add in, I mean, I think everybody can contribute, but does anybody want to like follow up with some folks and make sure I want to don't want to add you uh, wrong because we're ready to end up in the paper, but. I think we, we, we should all put like, like, I think we need, someone has to come up with how we identify relationships and then we can populate with the knowledge of the community and the people contributing to what relates to what, like, how do we want to present relationships or the metadata? Or should we put them in structure? How, how do we want to build structure around this blob of, or list of of of, um, of things, right? Do we want to, like, I think that's the question. And then once you get, you answer that question, people could just contribute with what they know and and their, from, from their domain expertise. Yeah, so the question is, it, it, does this structure look good or do we need to change it? And, and if it looks good, do we just add the metadata? So I know over time, maybe we should, you know, take a look at the FAI landscape and, you know, learn something from this. Um, 
because there is always to be the problem because all of the stack of CNCF can go to this, you know, cloud native AI landscape, and uh, we want we we don't want to just duplicate it, right? Um, right. The question is like, do we want to be specific to machine learning and how to identify um, each kind of subsection? Is is probably the question we need to answer, right? We need we need to answer right in the next couple of maybe weeks. Um, okay. Yeah, it sounds good to me. So I, I I think next step is just to solidify these sections before the next meeting. And so does that yeah. sound good? Yeah. I actually like, you know, LFI landscape, like not maybe all the tools, but they kind of like, you know, split it between machine learning data model and distributed computing. But maybe, you know, we need we can learn something from here. But yeah, let's see. Or, or basically feel what's missing, right? Like I think uh, the, 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 the cube tooling and like things like uh, uh, serve or Knative and all these things are not in this landscape. So this is more of a, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll stop because I think we're out of time. We can continue chatting on Slack, I guess. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Thank you. See you. Yeah, thank you. See you. Bye. Okay, bye.